Hello and welcome to the third video in this series, building a Forex backtest system and bot. So in this video, then we're going to start using the Oanda API and see if we can get some data out. So I'm on the developer portal for Oanda under the REST version 2. Clicked on development guide on the left hand side. And what you can see here, first of all, importantly for the REST API, we have two URLs. One is the actual trade one for real accounts. And the other one is the practice URL, which is the one we're going to use to make our request with our demo account. So we're going to copy that, go into Postman and just paste that there and remove the tab. And now back in the Oanda documentation, let's choose an endpoint we actually want to access and let's access the instrument endpoint so we can see that the endpoint itself is forward slash v3 forward slash instruments then the instrument itself and candles so if we open this we get a lot more detail as to exactly how that works the first thing you get is all the parameters you can send with your request the first is authorization which i'll come to in a minute and then importantly is the instrument itself which goes here then the price component we want the default is m for mid we could do a or B for ask or bid. And then the granularity is important. So do you want hour candles, five second candles, whatever. Then we can send the count, the from date, the to date, and you can read yourselves all about the details on here of the different things we can do. You might not know, for instance, what pricing component you can send. So if you click on pricing components in the documentation, it will tell you exactly what you need. It says it's a string, so that means it's characters contain any combination of the characters M, B, and A. So I'll go back then to the candles again. And what we'll do is we'll get the Euro US dollar. We'll get just the default M so we don't specify anything for the price. We'll get the granularity being the hour candles, which I click on candlestick granularity and have a look on here. We can see that that's H1 for the hour candlesticks and we'll make the count 10 so we don't get too many of them. If we go down here, we get an example of actually making the request and we can see how the URL was built up here. So we can see that it's forward slash v3 then instruments and then the instrument itself and candles like so so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to copy that part there go back to postman and paste this on the end here remembering to put a forward slash after oanda.com and that's our euro set up to get the euro us dollar back inside oanda before we run the request important to note is something about responses when you make a request to the api you'll get a response not just data but a response code and that code will tell you what actually happened on the back end and oanda is saying here that they're going to give a 200 status code as the response if everything worked as expected otherwise they're going to give you either a 400 a 401 a 404 or a 405 now you can click on those links to have a look at what they are but i'm sure you've seen 404 before not found i think 500 is server error 502 is bad gateway 201 would be created it's not available here but it's important to note when you're building your application that you deal correctly with these responses because they tell you when something has gone wrong so without further ado then let's try making our request now i said the one thing we've got to pay attention to is the authorization so let's go back up to the development guide and here there's details for authentication and we can see an example here of how it's done. We have to send a header in called authorization and we have to send bearer space and then our API key along with our request. So back into Postman, let's set all of this up. So first of all, parameters we will say that the count is going to be 10. So I've clicked on the params tab here underneath the request and we'll say the granularity is H1. So 10 candles, granularity H1, the price will leave as M, so we'll get the mid prices. And now we have to set up the authorization. So we'll go into headers, find the key authorization, and now as a value, our bearer space API key. And make sure you include the space. And now if I click send, what I get back from Oanda is the, the 10 most recent hourly candles for the euro and the US dollar. And what you can see here is that we've got a JSON object, as we've looked at in the previous video. I have an object here with a key instrument telling me what the instrument is, key saying granularity, telling me what the granularity is, and then a key saying the candles, and these are a list denoted by this square bracket here. And then each candle is denoted by these curly braces as an object. And I get told, was it com is it complete or not? What's the volume? What was the time? And this time is in UTC. And what is the pricing, the OHLC pricing? of that candle. So you can see that this one was at three in the morning on the 26th of January, 2021. Now I can scroll down to the bottom of the list and actually find that the complete for the this candle is false. And that's saying that the 12 o'clock candle, UTC remember, has not 
completed yet. And this is important when you're running with your bot because it's an easy mistake to make to get the candles and think that all of the data you get is actually completed candles. It isn't. But there you can see how easy it is to get information out of the OANDA API. Another interesting endpoint we can look at is the accounts endpoint because inside here we can look at the instruments that are available to trade on our account. So this one here is v3 forward slash accounts. We need to put in our account ID here that's different to the previous one forward slash instruments. An example request here is here where we simply send that pure request and what we'll get back is all of the instruments that we can trade on an account and this is also critical for getting the bot up and running. So to finish this video let's have a, a quick look at this one. So I'm back into Postman. I'm going to just, you, if you want by the way you can save this one and create a new request or something. I'm not going to. I'm just going to go to version 3 forward slash accounts forward slash and now you need to paste in your account ID forward slash instruments parameters here we don't actually need any parameters in this request at all and the headers they're going to stay the same we're going to send our authorization and now just click send and now you'll see that we get a JSON object back with a key instruments and that's a list and now we've got all of the instruments that we can trade on this account so for example we've got silver so XAG US dollar it says it's a metal its display name, its pip location, so this is 10 to the minus 4, so 0 0.00001. Uh, the display precision, so it displays the price up to five digits after the decimal point. And then the margin rate, the maximum order unit, the minimum position size, all of the information you could think of, the days that it's actually trading and things like that are on here. And this is, of course, really, really useful information. And one of the things I guess you've noticed is just how quick it is when we make the request. It comes back almost instantly. And you can already see the advantages of using an API like this because you can write yourself a program that can go through all of the instruments that you can trade instantly and analyze them. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can use Postman and also how we can use the documentation inside the OANDA API to be able to get information out of OANDA and query it. So from the next video onwards we're going to start building our systems up inside Python but I thought it would be a good idea to show you first how exactly we go about querying the API. So any problems or comments or questions or anything please feel free to write them below the video otherwise hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch.